High Commission. We are here today to remember and celebrate the life of Murray Peter Harris. Gathered here with us today in New Delhi are Murray's immediate family, his wife Meg Taylor and sons Jonty, Harley and three-day-old Ned. Murray's parents, Jan and Peter Harris, sisters, Kay Harris and Linda Mary Phil. Meg Taylor's parents, Joe Casey and Paul Taylor and brother, JP. Murray's close mates from Australia, Stuart Cook and Simon Cullum, the family's trusted companions, Raj, Mary, Shaker, and Rajam. Doctors Terry Witt and John Llewellyn. Murray's and Meg's friends in New Delhi, including those from the Canadian Embassy, the American Embassy School, and the Australian New Zealand Association and Murray's and Meg's colleagues, including those from the Australian High Commission, the American Embassy, the New Delhi diplomatic community, and the New Delhi-based media. This is also an international service with many of Murray's and Meg's friends and colleagues from Canberra, Sydney, Nowra, Toronto, and Beijing participating in this memorial service through audio broadcast and over the internet. Murray's walk through life crossed so many of our paths and the large numbers that are gathered here today are testament to that. In celebration of his full and extraordinary life Meg Taylor has asked for representatives 
of, from Murray's family, friends, and work colleagues to share with us their reflections about Murray. And I would now like to ask Murray's sister, Kay Harris, to join me here at the lectern. Murray was my brother. He was also a son, a friend, an uncle, a son-in-law, a diplomat, a brother-in-law, a colleague, a godfather. Most importantly for Muzz, he was husband to Meg and a father to Jonty, Harley and Ned. It would be fair to say that I've undergone some difficulties in preparing this speech. This is all somewhat overwhelming for me. Since Friday, I've spent many daylight hours and every sleepless night trying to formulate the perfect words and phrases to convey what Murray meant to his family. And I'd reached the conclusion that, in fact, there are no perfect words or catchy phrases to honour Murray as I'd like him to be honoured or to sum up a man who packed so much into his 41 years of life. On occasions like these, it's funny what becomes important. For some, it's the height of the easels. For others, the perfect song. For me, it's been the order of service and finding the perfect words to say today. So here are my perfect words, and they come straight from my heart. What I can now tell you is that for me, Murray raised the benchmark of how to live life. He understood what was right. He never compromised his values, nor judged in others. He showed respect to everyone he met, no matter what their circumstances. He always behaved honourably. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life you've imagined. Murray did just that. He spent a number of years searching, inquiring, exploring, and testing. He traveled extensively. He completed two or three degrees. I'm sorry, but we've lost count. He worked in third world countries, doing good things for less fortunate people. In the past decade, all those streams, the experience, the wisdom, the creativity, and the energy all converged to give Murray the life he'd imagined. Murray loved his work, his friends, his family. He was truly a happy man. Throughout last night, once I had found my perfect words, they just kept coming. So please bear with me while I make a few acknowledgements. I know Murray wouldn't have minded. <laughs> 